Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft. In today's video, we're going to be talking about wool blankets. Now, one of the things that I've probably gotten the most requests for is this $50 Ektos blanket. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. It's E-K-T-O-S. Uh, lucky for me, it's navy, and all my other ones are green, so I can just call it the navy blue blanket. So, from the moving forward, when I'm talking about the blue blanket, I'm talking about the Ektos or Ektos or whatever. Uh, it's made in India. It's $50 on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description box down below if you want to know more about it. Uh, and then next to it, I have the green Pathfinder blanket. And this is the comparison you guys wanted to see. You wanted me to compare these two blankets because they're both 100% virgin wool. Uh, they both are very similar in a lot of ways. But one is $50 and one is almost $200. And so you guys wanted a comparison because I have other videos where I compare different wool blankets. This one is 60% wool. This one is 70% wool. These two are 100% virgin wool. And so when it comes to wool, a lot of people seem to over exaggerate its capabilities. And for me personally, I like wool in the warmer months. There's a lot of people that swear wool will keep you warm in the tundra. You can go on negative 100 degrees and it's still going to keep you warm and that's it's not accurate. Uh, from my personal experience, uh, if you don't have a fire in front of you, you can't take these down very cold. Uh, the fire is what keep is what's keeping you warm, not the blanket itself. And so you'll have people with long fires and little fires. And to be honest, when making this video, I was researching wool. So I have a very small, limited knowledge of wool. And so I wanted to expand my knowledge so that I can make a better video for you guys and compare things that actually mattered. Uh, one of which is the weight. So this one, the blue one is five pounds. The green one is six pounds. And so it's a one pound heavier but the green one is 19 inches wider. They're about the same length, but the green one is 19 inches wider. And so that extra width, it probably gives it that extra pound. And so they're about the same. And these blankets are completely different. I've tried making this video before and I felt like I was telling people what they wanted to hear, which means that they're going to only hear what they want to hear. And so I'm going to talk about wool and then I'm going to tell you the difference between the two because they are very different. And then you guys can kind of make a informed decision on what you want to pursue. Uh, I don't recommend buying one of these based on the information I'm going to give to you today. Because like I said, the more I researched wool, the more and more confused I got. Like everybody seems to know what wool does, but nobody knows how it does it. There's like uh, the fact that it retains 80% of its insulated value even when it's wet. That seems to be common knowledge. Everybody seems to agree that it still does what it's supposed to do even when it's wet. But nobody knows how it does. I found like six or seven different reasons why it does that. And they contradicted with each other and they some of them didn't make any sense at all. And so I'm just going to go and I'm going to tell you based on my experience and my limited knowledge and the research that I did, what I feel to be true. I don't want you guys taking it as fact, but if you guys do know more, leave it in the comment section down below because I would like to know more about wool. It seems to be this mystery fabric that everybody loves, but there's a lot of misinformation about. Uh, the thing that I like about wool is it keeps my feet warm. And so the basic understanding that I have, when I think about an insulator, I think about something that keeps hot on one side and cold on the other, okay? And so if I'm in a sleeping bag, right, the cold is on this side and my body heat's on this side and the cold's not getting in and the heat's not leaving. It's just like the insulation on your house. You want the cold on one side and the heat on the other, and you don't want them mixing and matching with each other. And so you put an insulator in between the two. Wool, I don't think, is an insulator. I think it regulates heat, meaning that there's a lot of air pockets inside of here. And wool breathes really well. It's, 
it breathes really well. That's what makes it so good in the summer and keeping you cool. But it breathes. And so what happens is, is your core body temperature is heating up the blanket. The heat uh, transfers through the length of the blanket and then it escapes. Okay, so it's it transfers the heat through its entirety really well. Uh, it's just like if you're cooking on titanium or copper or stainless steel. <clears throat> if you're cooking on certain materials, the heat doesn't dissipate as well as with titanium. Titanium heats up really well, cools down really well. I think wool does the same thing. It <clears throat> transfers that heat throughout its entirety. And so in the winter, <clears throat> it keeps my feet warm because as my core body temperature is rising, it's taking that temperature and distributing it through my the entirety of my body and keeping my feet warm. <clears throat> Where a sleeping bag, my core is producing heat and it takes a long time for the air way down by my feet to circulate and get warmed up. And so that's a benefit of wool. Uh, the other thing is you can have a really small fire and the heat of that fire will reach the blanket and then dissipate through the entirety of it. And so a really small fire can keep you really warm in wool. And so I think that that seems to make the most sense to me because those things seem to make sense for when I'm using a wool blanket. If I'm by a small fire, I get really, really warm in my wool. But if it's cold outside, the breathability, my body heat can't keep up with the outside temperature. So the outside temperature is seeping through instead of my body heat seeping out. And I think that that, that makes sense to me. I don't know if it's accurate again. It's just the, the research and the experience that seems to be true to me. And so I really like wool when it comes to sitting by the fire. I really like wool when it comes to warm nights uh, where it's warm and it's distributing the warmth to my feet and then it's also breathing. It's not as clammy and <sighs> condensation and stuff in the morning. When you have a sleeping bag and it's really hot and muggy and you wake up and you're sweaty and it's muggy inside that sleeping bag, the breathability of wool allows all that to escape. And so you don't wake up as gross feeling. You don't feel that hot, humid, gross feeling when you wake up when you're under wool. The other thing is wool uh, wicks moisture. So it takes the moisture off of you and it wicks it to the surface. And so the thing that I think makes wool so amazing isn't the fact that it keeps you warm and it keeps you cool. It's that it, it caters to our natural instinctive way of heating and cooling. Okay. So what it does is it takes our body heat that we generate when we're cold. When we're cold, our body starts burning calories on its own. We start to shiver. We start to do things so that our core body temperature elevates. And then the wool distributes that heat, okay? So it takes our natural ability to heat itself and it makes it more efficient. It uses it in a more efficient way. It takes our natural heating and efficiently uses it to warm up the entirety of our body. Same with cooling. Our body sweats, which takes advantage of evaporative cooling. And when we wear cotton or different materials, the sweat just pools and collects into that fabric and doesn't evaporate. Uh, we've all had the ring around our neck and our armpits, uh, sweaty girls. And so the fabric, the cotton, holds that moisture, it doesn't allow it to evaporate and take advantage of evaporating cool, evaporative cooling. Uh, where wool wicks that moisture to the surface and allows it to evaporate. And so we're sweating, but it's taking it and it's keeping us dry and it's evaporating, keeping us cool. And at the same time, we've all gone into a pool or a lake or something where we've gotten a little bit wet and then you get out and it's 90 degrees outside, but a little breeze and it's chilly because of the moisture and that uh, slight breeze can really make a difference in your body temperature. Well, with that moisture wicked out to the surface, a small breeze and the breathability of the wool allows that cool air to circulate and keep you a lot cooler than it would if you didn't have it. And so I feel like wool 
is an amazing material. It's just not as extreme as people expect it to be. Uh, I wouldn't take it out into the Arctic. I wouldn't take it out right now. Today's high I think was 18 degrees. I'm not taking this with me. The advantage of a sleeping bag is for the same weight, you're gonna stay way warmer. So in the winter, I always carry a sleeping bag. I never carry wool in the winter. I always carry a sleeping bag. Summer, like spring and fall is my favorite time to use wool. Uh, but even in the summer, having like a 70% or a 60% or a 70% and just allowing it to, all that heat and stuff to escape. Uh, it's really nice having, not waking up clammy. I know I'm repeating myself, but like I said, I researched this and the more I researched it, the more confused that I got. And so I'm not real confident with the information I'm giving you, but I'm gonna do the best I can and you can take with it what you will. And so when it comes to these two blankets, I can easily tell you what you wanna hear. I can easily say that this blanket will do everything this blanket does. This $50 blue blanket will do everything this green one will. Uh, the other advantage that I forgot to mention is they're fire resistant. And so sitting next to a fire, the embers and everything are not going to wreck your blanket. You can just brush them off. Uh, they are flame resistant, or not flame resistant, but fire resistant. So they're not just gonna melt or combust like a synthetic material would. So I can easily tell you that this one will do everything this one can and this one can do everything this one can. They both wick moisture, they both uh, transfer heat, they, they both do the same thing, but they are completely different. The way that Caroline probably said it the best when she said, the blue blanket seems like a picnic blanket that you throw out on the ground and have a picnic on, where the green one feels more like a blanket that you would put on your bed or curl up on the couch with. It's thicker, it's softer, it's airier and fluffier, where the blue one is very thin and dense and compressed. It's like compacted. I don't understand why it's just so smashed. Uh, there is no loft, there is no nothing in this blanket. It's literally smashed as thin as they could possibly get it, it feels. Where this one is a lot softer, it's more airy and fluffy. And so, the green one is much more comfortable than the blue one. The other thing is I was testing these, so I had them on the couch and Caroline was covering up with them. Uh, I wrapped them around me and went outside and hung out with the dog. And the compactness of the blue one, I think allows the air not to transfer through it. Because the green one, when I was out there and a big gust would come through, it would just rob all my body heat, it was cold. Where it wasn't as bad with the blue one. Uh, it's still, I could still feel the breeze cut through it, but it didn't just completely rob me of everything. And so I think that the compactness of this, then the density, uh, is a little bit more wind resistant than the green one, but the green one's definitely way warmer. It uh, definitely holds the heat a lot better. It definitely doesn't transfer the heat out as fast. And so I think that the green one is, so the Pathfinder $200 one is a lot more comfortable. It's a lot warmer, not a lot warmer, a little bit warmer, where the blue one is more utilitarian. It is what it is, it's a 100% wool blanket and it's going to do what 100% wool blankets do, but it's not as comfortable, it's not as comfy cozy, uh, it's not as soft, it's just a utilitarian. If you want a 100% wool blanket, the blue one will fill that need or that want. And so for $50, you can get a 100% wool blanket. If you want a 100% wool blanket that's comfy and cozy and gonna keep you warm and feel good, that's where the green one comes in. And so, like I said, I don't think that the blue one does anything that the green one doesn't, and I don't think the green one does anything the blue one doesn't, but I think the green one is just a better representation of a blanket, where the blue one is just like a throw, like it's like a rug, okay? So, 
that's my video. I know it wasn't the best video. Uh, I debated whether or not I was going to make it or not. But I know a lot of people were asking what my thoughts and feelings were on this blanket. Uh, because it is so obtainable. $50 isn't a lot of money, especially for a wool blanket, especially for a 100% wool blanket. And so if you're looking for this, the other thing that I want to mention, I have almost forgot, is if you doubled up these, so let's say you bought two of these, it's going to be warmer, okay, so you're looking at 10 pounds of blanket instead of the six, but it'll be, but it's still dense, it's still compact, like putting two of these together isn't going to make it any fluffier. Okay, it's still going to be, it's just going to be too compact, dense blanket. It's not going to be fluffy and nice like this one. Okay, so even if you did buy two, it still wouldn't be the same as this one. So that's another thing that I wanted to mention, because everybody's going to say that. They're going to be like, oh, I'll just buy two. And yes, it's going to be warmer. It's going to be warmer than the green one probably, but it's not going to be that light, fluffy, comfy texture it's you're not going to get that unless you spend the money so with that being said leave any knowledge or questions in that comment section down below tell me what you thought i know this wasn't the best video i ever made i'm not the most confident in this video but let me know what you thought of it and i cannot wait to see you in my next video